What's good, everybody? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at again with another header of the Hall of Game podcast, and we're on another one and one and I definitely thank you, brothers, that came on and listened to the trucking show that we had with HT Logistics. want to thank him again. And today we have one of the uh, best burgeoning uh, Clear Your Debt channels <laughs> here in, uh, in YouTube and, and, and also uh, you know, getting popular here in YouTube. We have brother, brother Lionel Young of the Savings Minus Debt YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. And he's here to ask answer a question that many of us have been discussing and talking about their many different views on the issue. Should you invest during a pandemic mm. such as the coronavirus? Thank you, Brother Lionel Young, for coming on. Shout out to Uncle Maddie Ghost in the building. Thank you, Brother. Go ahead and tell the people what your channel is about, Brother. All right. Uh, like like uh, O'Shea said, my name is O.J. Young, and I what I am is a 100% debt-free motivational speaker and personal finance educator. What I do is help people get out, become financially free by uh, exposing what I call the glitches in the debt matrix. And what that mean is that for the first 40 years of my life, I lived in a, I believed in credit and debt and believing in financing everything that goes down in value and couldn't figure out why I was living paycheck to paycheck. And then I decided to trust mathematics, use math on my finances and became financially free. And now here I am helping thousands of other people do the same way but the only thing i use is just basic mathematics and that's it period that's it all right all right mm -hmm. all right so i i definitely uh thank you for coming on and you it's not the first time that we've basically um done a show and a, a lot of your uh, uh, uh answers lead in the in the same direction but i yeah. like how you always ask the questions right and now a lot of people are talking about investing during a pandemic right now, businesses are closing. This is the best time to strike. This is the kind of, you know, I'm in, in, currently in Uganda right now. This is also another, uh, this is another um, thing that a lot of Ugandans are talking about right now, investing during this particular crisis. What does Lionel Young feel about this? <laughs> well, thank you for asking. I appreciate it. Uh, you know what? The funny thing is that people, People in debt really don't understand that they're in debt. So regardless of uh, a pandemic or anything, first you got to figure out if you, if that's if investing is even an option for you, right? Okay. All you got to do is add up your savings, add up your debt. Savings minus debt equals how much money you have to invest. And if that's in a negative, it's it's really not even an option. That's and so that's what I try to help people understand. So is it, first you got to figure out does your bank account agree with you investing? That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, let me let me ask you this and shout out to uh, Ill Wills and it also shout out to uh, uh, Patreon.com Dollar Wills. Got to change teachers taking out. Thank you, brother Maddie. Thank you, brother Ill Wills. That's how I met you. What up, Larry Brown? Let me ask you this, right? Because some people are going to say, "All right, well now, I know what you're talking about. What you're talking about makes sense. I definitely understand that savings minus debt." is what I have left. Mm -hmm. But there are people like Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones bought the Dallas Cowboys and was in a hell of a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. And then the Cowboys became a billion dollar franchise. Mm -hmm. If he would have had your mentality, he would be broke or not as rich mm -hmm. as he was. Mm -hmm. Or what if I have an opportunity to get into an industry right now? I know a lot about the industry. I mm -hmm. have the debt. But that business might be the reason why I can finance the rest of my stuff. And mm -hmm. I can then pay it off if it hits. What would you say about that? Well, I got to make sure. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, I got to make sure when you talk, there's a difference between personal debt and business debt, right? Mm -hmm. All I deal is with personal debt, never business debt, because people like to mix business debt and personal debt. Yeah. And the reason why they're different it's okay to have debt in business because it's tax different. Personal debt is it's a very bad idea. You don't have personal debt. And so a person coming to me asking, hey, man, I got this shot at this thing, man. Should I invest in this business? The first thing I'm going to ask is see if they've invested in the business of themselves. So first thing mm -hmm. I'm going to ask is, let me see your personal credit report. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm going to ask that. Not your credit score, your entire credit report. Mm -hmm. If a person comes to me with a 20-year-old student loan on their credit report, 
talking mm-hmm. about they wanted to get into a business, I would immediately tell them, no, you have no money. You have a 20 year old student loan. Mm-hmm. I would, I would never try. I would never advise somebody that has a tw- went to college for four years, but kept their student loan for 20 years. I would never advise them to go into financial business. I would never do that because what they're doing is messing up in their own business and they don't even know it. Mm-hmm. So then let me kind of go back right now then, right? Because if a person has debt, because, you know, honestly, we had a show the other night. Um, I think that you heard that show and I, I didn't mention your name, right? I did. Uh, Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I mentioned your name. I know that if you were on that show, <laughs> it would have been a different conversation. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it would have been much, I, I think that some people would have been on, on that panel would have would have either had to rethink their positions. Um they would. Yes, they would. Okay. Let's talk about that, right? Because right now, you know, I do have the business show, the Hall of Game. Mm-hmm. And and the Hall of Game, if you if you ever, you know, watch it, it's it's guys. You know, I, I have guys that are that are at our medical doctors, like Dr. Kenya Middles, he comes on, uh, Antoine Wade, NBA. Um, all of these brothers that come on, they have all these differences of opinions. And there's then there's Lionel Young way out in the wilderness, like John the Baptist, you know, that's like he's the guy that's 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 talking that the the the, the discussion that nobody wants to hear, right? And right. right. I want to I want to ask you this. If you mm-hmm. are in debt right now, what is your only main focus that you feel that the person should have, despite what's going on in the world? Uh, making sure I have a place to live. Okay. Making sure, making sure my lights, water, everything that keep me alive. So I wouldn't, if I lost my job or didn't, you know, didn't have the money, I wouldn't be paying car notes no more. I wouldn't be paying credit card bills. I wouldn't be paying none of that. I'd be paying my, my living expenses. But the majority of people in debt, they're still worried about their credit. Totally forgetting about what they, what, what they need most is living expenses. Okay. Mm Hmm. Let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. So now I know that I should maybe not think about investing. Maybe I should or should not. But I have mm-hmm. personal debt. Mm-hmm. What are the strategies if I have personal debt right now during the current, especially right now? And let's say if I lost my job. Mm-hmm. OK, the economy, I think someone said that the in United States right now. The unemployment rate is 13 and a half percent. Somebody check that for me. Let me know what's going on, brother. Man, he goes, if that number is right, 13 and a half percent, that's the unemployment rate. And that's very, very high for the United States. Right. But obviously the, the, the economy is opening up. I have debt maybe because of coronavirus has been it has been added up. And now the economy is opening up again. What strategies should I be looking towards to get out of debt? How do I do this? First, you got to realize you are in debt. Okay, that's very important. You got to you got to really understand. And this is the best way I make people in debt understand that when you're in debt, O'Shea, money doesn't exist for you in any form. Gold, silver, cash, euro, whatever. Right. And I can prove that. Right. So do this. Do this, O'Shea. Anybody in the room, I want you guys to understand something so you can do this. Hold a twenty dollar bill in your hand. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to go twenty dollars. Minus your student loan debt equals the amount of money that's really in your hand. Okay. All right. Now, now this is the glitch in the debt in the debt matrix. Which one are you going to believe? Mathematics or your lying eyes? You tell me. Is the $20 still in your hand when you do that, O'Shea? Nope. Okay. Now let's take out the $20. Let's put in mm-hmm. gold. Let's say you got a thousand dollars worth of gold in your hand right now. One thousand mm-hmm. dollars minus your student loan debt. Equals how much gold is in your hand? How much gold do you have in your hand, O'Shea? Zero. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't. You got to realize that once you, that if you understand that you have no money to invest, it's going to wake you up and what you should do. So for people that wakes, let's do it for example, people that wake up and say, "Oh, damn, I am broke. What should I do?" All right. The first thing I I tell people, "Hey, do you have, do you have retirement? Do you have four hundred one k?" They say, yeah. I say, if you want to save for retirement, pay off your student loans with it right now. Right now, this minute. And then you'll be free. 
because that's the only way you're going to get out of student loan debt is death or pay it off. You only have two choices. Right. So I tell them to do that and they'll free themselves. Everything else is bankruptable. So you pay off your student loans with your 401k, go, go file chapter seven and you'll be free come this new economy coming up because it's a new economy coming. It's about to be a serious, serious recession, serious business. It's going to make 2008 look like a baby and nothing can stop it. Why do you say that? Millions. I'm, I'm glad you asked that question too. Millions of people are out of work. Mm -hmm. Millions. Mm -hmm. Millions of jobs have disappeared. So they're not even jobs for them to go work at to pay their mortgage or the rent or their car notes or anything else they're financing. Nothing's going to stop that recession. Nothing's going to stop it. Mm -hmm. So if you can get to zero by 2021, you're going to be ready for the new economy because that's what's coming. There's so a new economy right now. Go ahead, There's, no, a new go economy. Ahead, go ahead. There's a new economy coming, for example. Let me give you another example, Shay. Mm -hmm. Right now is the time for now businesses have seen Uber just take off, right? Uber, uh, all these Lyft and uh, Amazon, and, and they don't have any employees. They make them all 1099. Now businesses had to scramble to get people home to work from home so they could survive. Now they're gonna now they have a chance now to catch up with. Microsoft, I mean, not Microsoft, but Uber and all those guys, because they eventually they're going to make those people at home be 1099 too. Now they have to worry about their taxes and insurance and all that crap. Mm. You think they're going to return back? Oh, coronavirus is over now. You guys can come back in. They're going to be like, no, wait a minute. We don't even need a building. We don't even need a building anymore. We don't have to worry about your insurance and your taxes. No, you guys can still work for us, but you're going to be 1099. That's coming. Believe that. Mm -hmm. How, there's going to be a ton of houses on the market next year. Ton. Ton. A ton. Nobody can pay their mortgages. Foreclosure. Foreclosure city. Mm -hmm. Two houses, three houses for the price of one next year. <laughs> you better wait. If, if you got money, I strongly suggest you wait till next year. You're going to get three houses for the price of one. Just, just chill out and wait. You'll never see this again. This will never happen again this century, ever. Hmm. That's how I know. I mean, look at it, Elshay. You can just see it's millions out of work, millions right. of job loss, mm -hmm. social distancing, so nobody can go back to work full time. They, they're working at 50% capacity, 50%, 20% less pay. Nobody's going to be able to pay the mortgages they used to can pay. That's done. So if you got cash, Next year's real estate is going to be Christmas for at least through two or three years. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Let me let me go ahead and do this. And shout out to the people in the in, in the room. Make sure that you subscribe to Savings Minus Debt YouTube channel. Just let me just uh, shout out to people. Hey, China, how you doing, Antonio? How you doing, Asia? How you doing, boo? King George, Askwith out of Canada. Hey, brother. Uh, King George, Dewan Trades. What's going on, brother? Dewan Hypocrisy, Mr. Grandeur, my brother, Trucker Abdullah. Thank you for being here. Beautiful mystery. Hey, baby. Uh, all you brothers and sisters, thank you for being here. Let me let me talk about this. All right. So if you are in debt, like you 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 were in debt at one point. Yes. Um, tell us about your story for those people who don't, you know, and, and how you came to the realization of your debt and things like that. Um. OK, so this is what kind of woke me up. OK, because you got to remember, I, I, I mean, you don't got to remember. But I didn't know I was in debt. I was just like everybody else, believing in credit and debt, worshiping the credit gods. I, was, I didn't think I was shit without credit score and all this stuff. All that's an illusion. Economic classes, none of that stuff even exists. Upper class, mid, uh, lower class, middle class, upper class. None of those. That doesn't even exist. I didn't know that. Right. So. I remember one day I was coming home from a six figure job, successful computer engineer, making six figures. And, and I was still living paycheck to paycheck and I couldn't figure out why. I was like, what the what's going on, man? It's not making any sense. But mm -hmm. what happened one day I went to go get a loan this time. I've never been turned down for a loan because I always had good credit and a good job. Right. Mm -hmm. To one day they said no. Right. And I said, what? They said, no, sir, you can't get the loan. I was like, why? You've reached your debt to income ratio, right? And I was like, what is that? 
Okay, so I went and read about it. I was like, okay, it says this. If you make, if you spend more than you have over the year, blah 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 blah. Right? I was like, okay, I understand all that, but here's the glitch in the debt matrix. I followed all the rules. I had to, all the rules of credit, having good credit, multiple credit cards, revolving credit card. That following the rules got me in debt. Now you guys are telling me no. I said right there, something doesn't make sense. Wait a minute, you guys got me here. Now you're telling me no. And then you give me this excuse. And then I figured it out. I wasn't using math on my finances. That's it. And then I started looking at my student loan. I kept my student loan for 10 years. I was like, Linnell, you went to college for four years, but you kept your student loan for 10 years? Does that make any sense in any country in the world, Linnell? I was saying this to myself in the car, too. I kid you not, O'Shea. I was saying this to myself. I said, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I do that? And I didn't have an answer. Oh, because everybody around me was doing it, thought it was normal. I was like, damn, that's not that. And then I, then I came across Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey basically said, use grade school, use the math that we learned in grade school on your finances and you'll win. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's it. And then it just changed my life. Once I got out, of, and then I got out of debt. And then I've been helping people ever since. Because you got to remember, O'Shea, slavery, like, slavery is still alive. It's student loan debt. If you don't pay the student loan debt off, O'Shea, you will die with it. How come? And if somebody says that to your shake, how come that doesn't scare you? See what I'm saying? That's the difference. Right. Okay. Okay. Let me let me uh, shout out to the unpopular opinion. He says, absolutely, you should invest. Be smart about it. OnlyFans is not an investment. Shout out to uh, that super chat. Um, let me talk about this. How were you able? Because for those people who were you know looking to do other things, right? Mm -hmm. And they they've been putting their debt off. What are some attainable strategies that you used to get out of debt? Like when you looked at your debt, how did you know that? How can I get out of this? First, you gotta first you gotta deal with the psychological part, right? Okay. You gotta okay. know down to the penny how much debt you're in. That's step one. You, according to the laws of mathematics, you you can never be a, become a millionaire if you don't know where to start. So you gotta know exactly how much debt you're in. Down to the penny. A lot of people don't know that. That's step one. And then step two, you've got to create a plan. This is what I do for clients. I create plans. First, I show them that debt. And then I say, hey, this and so they can understand the psychological part. I'll tell them their total debt first because a lot of people don't know their total debt. Right. Yeah. And then I'll say now for a week, I want you to ask each and every one of your friends around you if they know the same thing, you know, right now, their total debt down to the penny. I said, I guarantee you none of them will. Not a pen, not not one person will. And then they come back and say, how do you know that? Because they're in debt. People in debt don't know they're in debt. So I create a plan. I say I do just like Dave Ramsey list list uh, list uh, debts from smallest to the largest. Okay. Interest has nothing to do with it. Interest is not the problem. It's the it's it's this it's just debt. So so they pay off the lowest one while paying minimums on the rest. And then once they pay that off. They move on to so on and so on and so on. And the psychological part is they notice that they don't have any other bills to take care of once they pay them off and close them. It's impossible for you, people to keep up with all those due dates, but people in debt think they can. Mm -hmm. So I, they create a plan and just follow the plan. But also they talk to me, too, because there's a psychological part to it. Because I promise you, O'Shea, if you've been in debt all your life, you only speak debt. And you don't know you speak debt. What is speaking debt? Uh, um, believing, believing you're a homeowner with a 30 year mortgage. That's speaking debt. When you know it's not mathematically true, you're speaking debt. When you finance a when you when you finance a cell phone, you're speaking debt. What are you doing financing a cell phone? If you believe you got a deal, if you got your car on sale when you finance it for 84 months. Why do you believe that? That's not true. It, math would clearly show you that's not true, but people believe it. That's speaking debt. Only, mm -hmm. only, only people in debt wait all day at a car lot to buy one car. Eight hours at a car lot for one car? That's only people in debt would do that. If you walked in with cash, you'd be in and out of there in an hour max. But people <laughs> in debt would pay all day to tie themselves to a car. Insane. Only people in debt do that. That's mm -hmm. debt speak. 
or when somebody tells you to invest while having students. This is the common thing what a lot of financial advisors do, O'Shea. Hey, don't worry about your student loan debt. It's only 6%. How about you take this money over here and, and invest it over there? And uh, and then you can pay it off with the pay it off with the money that you quadruple over there. And, and, and then you can pay off your student loan debt. You know, a per if a financial advisor ever told me that, I would turn to him and say, do you have student loan debt? I guarantee <laughs> he's going to say yes. And then I'll say, that's why you're telling me that financial information, because you're in student loan debt. I wouldn't trust anybody with student loans older than their children. That doesn't make any sense. See, <laughs> <laughs> anybody telling me to invest in cryptocurrency? I say, can I see your credit report? It'll tell me why you're telling me to invest in cryptocurrency. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> Today, today, the 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 uh the the, the chat is not going to be as motivated as it usually is. Guys, let me go ahead and do this. Well, no, y'all. It's math, chat. okay? It's math, and and remember, everything I say is mathematically true. Now, I just mm -hmm. want to say this before people get into it. Mm -hmm. If your feelings start to get wrapped up, wrapped up in what I'm saying, you start getting upset or mad about something. Those are feelings. Those have nothing to do with mathematics. All I want you to see to yourself is this: Is LJ's math right? And then if it's right, I want you to ask yourself, why am I upset if his math is right? OK, mm -hmm. that's it. That's all I want to say. <laughs> Let me do this, guys. Uh, like I said, I, I bring the best people on to talk about these things. Right. I, I, I bust my ass on doing that. Uh, so what I will ask you to do is I'll take some time to uh, uh, promote the brother's channel and <sighs> shit. Let me go ahead and share the screen real quick, brother. Appreciate Shout out to brother, uh, brother Murray out of Atlanta area. I'll read his uh, super chat in a minute. So, guys, do me a favor. For those of you who don't uh, are not familiar with the Savings Minus Debt channel, this is where you can find it. All right, so you can go here and support. And thank you for the people supporting the channel uh, 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 with your super chats. Um, thank you so much. You can go there and do that. Uh, and brother counselor Murray, I got to get my brother on here. Need more content like this. I've done very well during the pandemic. It definitely has changed how I manage my money. Thank you, brother Murray. Beautiful mystery. Need to give me your phone number. <clears throat> I support being financially literate. Keep it up guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, Asia. Um, now let me, now guys, make sure you, and ladies, that if you, uh, subscribe to this channel, press one, hit the bell. Also be notified. YouTube has been hating on the notifications. So, um, understand that right now. I definitely apologize about that, but a lot of my content is not going out like it was last month. So if you guys are not getting um, the notifications, that's because it's YouTube's fault. Thank you, brother NC Biggs. O'Shea, thanks to you and LJ. I'm close to being free. Myself, thank you for all the great content. Let me talk about th this idea of... Now, I I I've read the Total Money Makeover uh, once. Shout out for not Lionel killing the Forex game. <laughs> Shout out to Uncle Maddie Ghost out of he's out of the Carolinas too, not too far from you. So let me let me let me let me ask you this, uh, brother Lanell, what has your lifestyle been? Let's say before you were in debt and where you are now, and what's the uh, flexibility that that you have um, uh, in, in your in your life right now, brother? Ask without ask that right after this. Go ahead, uh, Lanell. I can do anything I want. I can okay. buy. I, you, when you get out of debt, you don't, you don't pay. I don't pay full price for anything anymore. I buy it from half, I buy it for half price from people in debt. Anything uh -oh. hard. Like I just wait for some, like right now, if you, if you're debt free right now, let me tell you something. If you're debt free right now, it's about to be Christmas for you. Cause soon as the stimulus money runs out, soon as unemployment runs out, mm -hmm. people are, people are going to go, it, things are going to crash and then they're going to be selling shit for half price. Houses, cars, you name it, whatever, it's coming up. Phones, laptops. Soon as the money stops, it's coming. July 31st is when the extra $600 of unemployment stops. But then by that time, the stimulus money was already gone before you got it. You could just look on social media. Everybody, if you're excited about $1,200 coming to you, you're in debt. Okay, because $1,200 <laughs> $1, wasn't going to do anything. But if you're happy yeah. about it, it's because you're in debt. Now, when that 600 stops, everything's going to be half price. So everything is, I don't, the price of anything is, 
is what I say it is. I don't care how much anything costs. I pay for I pay it what I want because there's there's millions of them of anything, cars, clothes, watches, whatever. Mm-hmm. So my life is um, I I look at taxes, different taxes can help you build wealth. You can't see that when you're in debt. I would have never saw I would have never saw that in a million years that taxes can help you build wealth if I was still in debt. Never saw that. Would have never seen it. So those are things. Um, the biggest thing is that I'm just help, helping clients see what I see. I want, I try to help people understand that it's not normal to keep student loans your entire life. That's not normal. That's only normal for people in debt. So I teach people that. Mm-hmm. I'm embarrassed, though, Shay. I'm a college, college educated computer engineer and I kept my student loans for 10 years and I passed math in college. Mm-hmm. Okay, that was a requirement, and I passed it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I kept it for ten years. That make any sense? It don't make any sense. So that that's my life now. I, I don't. Um, uh, I don't. You know, if I bought, I want a new phone, I buy it off of Amazon for half the price. Um, that, if that makes sense, right? Okay, let me uh let me do this and shout out to everybody in the building there. Shout out to my brother Cut to the Chase TV. Uh let me let me let me talk about this, right? I remember reading the Total Money Makeover. And mm-hmm. at this time I was wow, I, I had to be like 2007, 2008, 2009, something like that. And he was talking about like a lot of things you gotta cut out, right? And um and I wish I would have kept that mentality a little bit more, you know, like when I was trying to pay off my credit cards, um, mm-hmm. you know, some, you know, he told people like, Hey, get a second job. Um, whatever you got to do to get more income to pay that debt off. And when you look at his show, Dave mm-hmm. Ramsey, I mean, the reason why he's so powerful is nobody has quite like a platform like his. Um, right. I haven't seen it in the world. His shows, he have people who come in and they pay something crazy. Like, $40,000 worth of debt off in six months. Like you never see that anywhere. But what would you suggest? Like if people are in debt, how am I going to pay it off? I got the psychological thing, all of that. And then we'll talk about credit cards in a minute. But what do you suggest people do to pay things off? First, I, first I look at their situation. I, I, I got to see how much debt they're in, what kind of job they have. And I look at it. If my, my, my thing is this. If you got if you got debt that you can't pay off in 10 years, go file chapter seven bankruptcy and you'll be free. If you add up all your debt and you're like, I can't pay this off in 10 years. And the reason why I say 10 years, because it's bankruptcy stays on your credit report for 10 years. Right. You just go file chapter seven bankruptcy and, and, and you're free. Period. It's done. You're free. Except for student loan debt. You can't you can't bankrupt student loan debt. Like, let me give you an example, O'Shea, okay? What if I told you economic classes don't exist and I could prove it? Would you believe me? Well, go ahead and prove it. Okay. Lower class, middle class, upper class don't even exist. All right? This is what I want you to do. Add up all your savings and add up Mm -hmm. all your debt. Mm -hmm. Savings minus debt equals how much money you have in real life. If that's in a negative, what class do you think you're in? Poor. That's true. You're in the debt class. There's only two classes. There's the debt class and there's the non-debt class. So you're yep. not you're not lower, middle, upper. You're just in debt. You're not even class. So classes don't even exist. But when you're in debt, you can't see that. Yeah. I couldn't see that. Mm-hmm. I mean, you around a lot of doctors, O'Shea. Right. And, I, and and this is something for you. This is how you could ask them without even knowing, without them knowing why you're asking them. Go to a doctor that you look up to that look like they just got money, money, money. And this is what I want you to do. Hey, man, do you, you still pay on your student loans? <laughs> if they, if they, and I'm telling you, if they say yes, they're broke. They don't have any money because you got to This is all you got to do. You walk in and say, you walk into their nice office, right? Where they keep all their their college, their college plaques on the wall. Yeah, I went to this college and that college and this college and I want you to notice the year on those dates, the the dates they graduated. And then when you're done looking at, them, I want you to turn to them and say, "Hey, are you still paying on your student loans?" When they say yes, 
then I want you to look back at the year they graduated. People with money don't keep student loans that long. That's dumb. Why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense. They're tricking you. That's an illusion. Let me ask you this. Why don't you think that, you know, a lot of people that are like, you know, very smart, intelligent medical doctors, mm -hmm. um, you know, people, you know, uh, I think that's brother Danny on, on my Facebook page. Shout out to the brother uh, medical doctors and stuff like that. Why don't we you know, are people that are in high professions? Why don't they understand this about money management? Why is this like a, a problem for everybody, no matter what your education system is? Because they're because they believe what they see on TV. They believe that if, if they're a doctor, they're supposed to have a house like this and a car like mm -hmm. that and a wife mm -hmm. like this, and kids like that. And then they go further in debt. So they believe and every and you got to remember, everybody around them, other people in debt, look at doctors as, oh, you're a doctor. You must have money. That's not true. That's an illusion. I don't, when this and you asked me earlier, how do I see things? I don't look at the way I look at everybody, O'Shea. I don't care who you are, what business you own, what doctor, what part of town you live in. Oh, shit, that means absolutely nothing to me. Nothing. I don't care what kind of car you drive. Doesn't mean anything. If you if somebody rolls up in a nice car and I and, and I say, hey, man, that's nice. You're making payments. They say, yes, I turn them off. You making payments on a car? You making payments on something that goes down in value? You don't have any money. I click them out. I don't care if it's a Ferrari. I don't care if it, I don't care if they live in Beverly Hills. You making mortgage payments? Yeah, I turn you off. And you believe you're a homeowner and you're making mortgage payments. You believe you're, you believe you're a homeowner with a 30-year mortgage. Yeah, click. I don't listen to them anymore. People with money don't make payments. Period. Especially 20-year-old student loans, O'Shea. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't you ever say out loud, ever, ever, mm -hmm. that you have student loans. Don't say it. If, even if you do have them for you, don't tell nobody. <laughs> okay, don't 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 get in with the group, O'Shea. Don't be like, oh yeah, me too. I got them too. They all con people with student loans love to congregate. Oh, me too. I got them too. And then they compare how much each other got. Don't ever do that, O'Shea. People with money don't do that. We walk away from people like that. Don't ever do that, man. And especially don't ever tell somebody you got a finance cell phone in your hand. Don't ever do that. Ooh, that's a no-no right there. That's a no-no. Let me let me ask you a question. All right. Yeah. Uh, the okay. So so let's talk about credit cards. And I, I understand that credit cards are that's like you know a big problem. It it, it was a problem that I had. I, you know I, I no longer suffer from that. But I know like Dave Ramsey says that he doesn't. Um, now I think Dave Ramsey's story was he was a he's from Tennessee if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. He was a millionaire. Then lost it all, and mm -hmm. they got it back, but all debt free. Mm -hmm. um, people think like, okay, there's the different thought processes, right? Like me, my credit cards, I always operate my credit cards that I have only have two. They are both always at a zero balance for the most part. Um, I've been, you know, with American Express, and I have a um, a Visa, but I only have those two. Mm -hmm. Some people feel that. Uh, you know, that once you pay your credit cards off, um, then it's better to live a life without a credit score at all. Like just I don't some people, you know, don't want to operate without a credit score ever. Then there's some people that say, OK, well, um, I'll keep a credit card and then I'll pay it off at the end of the month or I'll pay it off before interest comes. There's people who say I don't even want to deal with credit cards at all. So my credit score now is zero. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you what do you think about that? I, that's the only thing I differ with Dave Ramsey. I believe I, be, I believe in credit. Credit is a tool. You got it, credit is not a need. It's a tool. So I look at credit as a like a hammer, a lawnmower, a weed eater. You know, I needed to rent a car. I needed to 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 uh, maybe I want to get a hotel room or whatever. Right. It's right. And, and the reason why I have it, because you got to remember, think about it this way. And this this is why I use it as a tool. I use it as a tool because I need to rent things or whatever I'm doing. And mm -hmm. plus, I use it as protection. Right. With a credit card, I don't have to worry about the security of every place I shop, because if it gets hacked, they have my credit card and not my debit card. That's why I use it. Right. right. And so and I pay it off in full every single month. 
Okay. That's it. That's all. And, 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 and my credit card has been compromised a couple of times, but if, it, if I was used, cause you got to remember when you go to stores, sometimes some stores use the chip. Some people, some people, some stores make you slide still. What's the good, mm-hmm. what good is the security chip? If every, if, if, if every store is not participating in it, it doesn't make any sense. Right. So mm-hmm. why take that chance on your debit card? Just use a credit card. And by doing that, my credit score is like 700 something, whatever. I really don't I really don't care about a credit score, but I'm just telling you it's 700 something. But it means mm-hmm. nothing to me. I don't really care what it is. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so me- one, I use one credit card. I think one single credit card is good. You just need one. You don't need you don't need multiple. You don't need an Amex. It's, you know, people believe Amex is better than this, and some people want to get a titanium card. That means absolutely nothing. Those those are illusions. Those are sale tactics. Hmm. That's it. It's nothing more than that. Promise okay. you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Shout out to Tony D for the super chat of twenty four ninety nine. Always in the building. Uh, always supporting the show. What's up, Taz? Taz, I'm gonna go back with the Ned content with you this weekend, brother. We're gonna definitely do that. Um, let me. Damn, so, happy, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh man, you know we be building it up, man. That's my brother, man. He get on my nerves. I like it. He get on my nerves. He my boy though. But uh, let me, let me, let me ask you this: When it comes to, you know, a house. Because this is this is also something I know Dave Ramsey, if I can remember that book, and that book is worth the buy. Like the total money makeover. If you could buy any book, I think every person, especially in the black community, that's a good, that's a good book to read. Um, mm-hmm. it's just such an oblique perspective that you don't hear every day. It like goes against everything you should be taught in school. But mm-hmm. um, and I've paid off credit cards, and the last time I got a credit card debt, and once I read once I read his book, that was it. I haven't been in that mm-hmm. problem since since then. That's mm-hmm. 12 years ago. Let me ask mm-hmm. you this though. Uh, with with respects to buying a house, mm-hmm. now Dave Ramsey is also another person that only believes in cash ownership of homes. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you know some of us who I mean, even in you know I'm living I'm right now I'm currently in Uganda. So in Uganda, uh, you know m- mostly it's a cash based system. Um, but in America, let's say, for example, you are in California, you in New York City. I mean, good luck in buying a house uh, that's worth five hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars. And um, you might not have all the money, maybe come up with 10 percent of the money. But mm-hmm. what do you think about somebody that gets a home loan? Uh, because obviously they can pay the home off. You know, if they want to pay it off, let's say if it's a 30 year loan, but they can work hard to pay it off in 10 years. Um, mm-hmm. And then that home will, um, you know, I know what you're talking about right now. Right. You know, the, the, be, be in the buyer's market. And, you know, there's times where there's seller's markets and there's buyer's markets. But do you believe that people, uh, if they are going to get a loan. A home loan, is that a bad idea or is it a good idea? In no, it's a, okay, because some people can't pay. First of, I mean, it's you got to just make sure you use the right words when you speak about money. Like when people say, "I bought a home," I say, "Well, there's only one way to buy a home, and that's cash." Okay. Okay. Anything else is called financing. So okay. when people say, I, "I'm buying a home," I mean, are you getting a mortgage? They say, "Yeah." I say, "That's financing. That's not buying." Okay. Mm-hmm. So think about it this way, O'Shea, because I'm not against getting a home loan. So this is what I, I help people understand. Now, when you go see the price of a home, right? Say like the house is, I'm going to just keep numbers low. Okay. So just for money's sake, right? Say mm-hmm. like there's a house on sale for a hundred thousand. Okay. Mm-hmm. That price only applies to people with cash. Okay, that only applies to people with cash. If you're financing it, you understand this. Mathematically, you got you got to understand that that price only means a hundred thousand dollars for somebody that pays cash. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, if you go in as a buyer, and you don't have the money, you have to mathematically understand that if you finance that home, you're going to be paying more more than a hundred thousand dollars. You have to yes. mathematically understand that. Yes. Okay. So if you understand that. Mm-hmm. The only type of mortgage that you're going to accept is the best one on the market and nothing less. Why would you accept anything less than the best one? 
So whatever the best one is in the United States, that's the only one you accept, period. So when you go into the bank, you say, hey, bank, what's the best mortgage you have in here? The bank's going to say, oh, you want that one? Yeah, here's the requirements. Then they're going to hand you a list of things. You're going to mm -hmm. look over those requirements. If you don't meet those requirements, you leave the bank and you don't come back until you do. That's when you know you're praying for a house. Uh-huh. And here's another thing. So you can understand what people in debt don't see. I'm going to tell you something. Now, follow me mathematically, O'Shea. Okay. I'm, I'm going to tell you I'm something. That, that, huh? I'm following you. Okay. Just mathematically, right? Now, we're going to keep the numbers low. So you're going to people in debt cannot see what I'm about to tell you. Okay. So if you walk into a bank, it's still like you saved up $20,000 in cash to put down on a hundred thousand on, on a house. I'm going to just say on a house. Okay. $20,000 on a house, right? But you have a hundred thousand dollars in student loan debt. Okay. That you've had for, let's just say 10 years. Okay. So you walk in the bank and say, Hey bank, I'm looking for a mortgage, man. My credit's good. I got a good job. Look at this. I got $20,000, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, right away, the bank is observing you. They, they can't, there's no, there's no paperwork telling you this. Okay. When you walk into the bank and you say, I got $20,000 and they run your credit, the first thing they're going to do is run your credit report. Now, right there, the bank understands that $20,000 minus $100,000 is negative $80,000. Mm -hmm. Now, if the person walks in, believes that they have $20,000 in, in, in cash, that's an illusion. So they're going to treat that person accordingly as they don't trust, as they don't trust mathematics. So they're going to do them dirty. Because they obviously don't understand math. Okay? But if they believe they got $20,000, oh, well, I guess they believe it. So they're going to give you a loan according to what your belief is in mathematics. Now, on top of that, you're also telling the bank, wait a minute. You're coming in here asking for a 30-year 30, a 30 loan, and you haven't even paid off your student loans in 10? Mm -hmm. They're going to treat you accordingly because you don't trust mathematics. You obviously don't know. So you're not going to get the best mortgage on them. You're not going to get the best mortgage on the market. You're not because you don't trust mathematics. But if you walked in the bank with twenty thousand dollars and they ran your credit report and you have all zeros, that's what my credit report looks like, O'Shea. One page, all zeros. <laughs> I walked in the bank with twenty thousand dollars. The bank is going to know that I know because they're going to look at my credit report and see all zeros. They're going to be like, "Oh, this dude really knows he has twenty thousand dollars," and they're going to only offer me the best mortgage on the market. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just math. It's just math. It's nothing more. I'm not doing. I'm not doing any tricks. I'm not saying anything fancy. I, I swear to you, Yoshi. I'm not saying anything fancy. Mm -hmm. The banks are going to treat you accordingly. If you don't know not to keep your student loans for 20 years while going to college for four years, and you really believe you're going to pay off a house in 30, no, you're not. They're going to own that house the whole time while the person's in it, calling themselves the homeowner, and not have a clue. and be happy that they get the write off interest on their taxes of their house. People be happy about that stupid nonsense. It's stupid. <laughs> oh man, I get to write off the interest on my taxes. You're happy about writing the interest off on a loan that you don't even need to have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. But if you don't know that when you walk in a bank like that, O'Shea, you don't know that and they're going to abuse you. They are going to financially abuse you for not knowing that. Let, let me let me ask you this, right? Because obviously, um, and, and shout out to Brother Mike. One or two cars you use wisely can build your credit for whenever you find the right house or property. Great topic. Keep pushing. Thank you. Shout out to Brother James Sandman in the building. Um, let me let me you know go 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 into this. Um, I know certain people like you, not to take you know people where you are, but you 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 actually relocated to other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, with, with certain people that have certain skill sets, you know, I, like, for example, I'm, I'm from California. California is super expensive. And when I decided to resettle back in the country, I've actually thought about, you know what, maybe I need to uh, you know, move to a state that has a lower cost of living so mm -hmm. that I can control, um, you know, some of my uh, uh, debt issues or something like that or pay mm -hmm. it off. I know that some people are doing that. Some people are a lot of people are, are, are really, especially since now. You know, moving from places like New York, 
are places like, uh, you know, the D.C. area. And people are looking to go into places, you know, somewhere in the, the South, South Carolina, North Carolina, Mississippi, mm-hmm. Alabama, um, getting readjusted to life so that, they, that things can be more cheaper and they can have more money. Um, mm-hmm. What what do you or even places like Nebraska, right? Like I mean, I would mm-hmm. I, I mean I, you know Nebraska, <laughs> but what would you suggest, man? Like you know, is this something that's optimal for somebody that's looking to really be concerned about their debt? Is is moving? I know you actually moved in with your family at one point to pay off some mm-hmm. things. What do you think about that? Well, first of all, let's say let me let me when you're out of debt, O'Shea, no place in the country is expensive. Okay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> It doesn't matter where you live. You can live in New York. You can live in California. It doesn't matter. It's only expensive to people who are in debt, not people that are not in debt. Okay? So that's an illusion. Those are all illusions. Like, oh, man, Calabasas, California is expensive. For who? People in debt? Not me. Mm-hmm. I'm not rich. I'm not even saying I'm a millionaire. But you got to look at it this way. Put, you gotta, this is how I always try to help people understand. So if you, if you do savings minus debt, and your finances are in a negative, that means if I had $1 in my savings account, that means my net worth is more than yours. Mm-hmm. Right? That, that's true, right? That's true. Very then nice. how come people don't believe it? it? It doesn't make any sense. That's why when you go to California, it's not it's not really expensive. If, if, you gotta, if you're gonna move someplace that you don't wanna move to, only people in debt do that. Only people in debt move to a place they really don't want to move to, but it's cheaper. Only people people in debt do that. I would never move to a place I don't want to live. I would never do that. I would never work at a place I don't want to work at because of money. I would never do that. Mm-hmm. Only people in debt do that. People that keep student mm-hmm. loans for 10, 15, 20 years, those are the people that move to Nebraska because they're in student loan debt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, I got to move here. The first question I ask them, you got student loan debt? Yeah, that's why you're moving there. <laughs> that's, those are facts. That's why you're moving there. Right. It's tr- I mean, O'Shea, I'm telling you something, man. You, you, you're in the doctoral program and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you how to be rich right now, O'Shea. Add up all your savings. Add up all your debt. Yes, including your student loans. Yes, including collections. Yes, including every single penny. And if that's in the negative, now all you got to do is believe it. Believe that that's how much money you have. Believe it. Once you believe it, O'Shea, you'll be rich. Once you once you understand, if you don't pay off the student loan, you'll be a slave to your debt. Hmm. You believe it, you'll be rich. You'll live anywhere you want, O'Shea, California, Calabasas, wherever you choose, New York, Brownsville. <laughs> Calabasas. <laughs> especially, especially next year, O'Shea. Especially next year. Oh man, you don't even understand what's about to happen. You're gonna I can see if if they put a put put it this way, if they put a painted everybody's roofs that have 30 year mortgages. Mm-hmm. And, and they say like they if they removed, if they kicked out everybody with a mortgage, there would be so many houses available, right? There would be millions of houses available, right? Mm-hmm. The, when you're out of debt, all those houses are available because the people with mortgages are depending on one job. All they take is just one job loss. Uh, somebody break the leg or uh, the wife dies, the husband dies. That's all it takes. And then when you're not in debt, you're right there to pick up the pieces when they go foreclose. And then you buy it. At a, you don't pay full price for hose, houses no more. Mm-mm. You look for tax liens, foreclosures. As long as there are people that believe they're homeowners with 30 year mortgages, I can live anywhere in the country that I choose. Mm, like that anywhere i would never pay full price for a house ever that only matters when i sell never when i buy Mm. let me let me let me do this and shout out to uh houdini unchained now for some of you niggas in debt if y'all want to get more in debt go ahead on support the podcast with some money are alike <laughs> if you're broke. Uh, you know, thank you for the super chat. Thank you for the the the, the, the support. Uh, you know, in the building. Make sure you guys like the video and subscribe. Thank you for the uh 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 support, brother Houdini. And thank you for joining up on Patreon for a brother. 
What's better, rent or equity in payment on a house? That's a good question. What is better? Well, what is what is better, rent or equity in a payment on a? Well, I mean, it counts on who's that question. If you're in debt, if you're in debt, you have no choice but to rent. The people in debt got to stop believing that they have an option to buy. That's the, that's the that's what I try to help clients. Hey, uh -huh. should I rent? I heard I should stop, I should stop renting and throw away money on 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 a on, on rent and blah blah blah. I say, does your bank account agree with you? Right. If you're in debt, savings minus debt equals how much money you have for a house. What is that? You're in a negative? Yeah, you ain't got no choice but to rent. Yeah, no, that's real. <laughs> Period, right? So, and when people, and another thing I'll show you, like when people talk about equity, why do people believe they own they own the equity in a house that they don't even own? Why do they believe that? I have no idea. People think they 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 have a 30-year mortgage, right? They don't own mm -hmm. the house, the bank's house, but they believe they own the equity. Why do they think that? I have no clue. You can't own That's the real. equity in something you don't own. That makes no mathematical sense. But people believe they do. Okay, whatever. The bank goes, whatever. Right. <laughs> hey, you think you're a homeowner? The bank gives a gives a person a mortgage, and the person says, "Am I a homeowner now?" The bank says, "You sure are, buddy. See you later. Here's the key. <laughs> whatever you want to be. Okay, you're a homeowner. Yeah." <laughs> All because people don't believe in mathematics. It's, it's just the craziest thing, man. It blows my mind, O'Shea. Blows my mind. And I'm just saying this in a way because I financed two houses, O'Shea. And I thought I was the homeowner in both. Once I got out of debt, I was like, they played me for a fool. Didn't right. even know it. Didn't even know it. Didn't even know it, huh? Mm -mm. They probably they probably saw that I had 10-year-old student loans that just laughed all the way to the... Uh, well, they already are the bank, so they didn't have to laugh anywhere. Back to their office, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. Yeah, like we got we got we got us one, huh? Yeah, we got us one. Another one that don't know. And it's the colorblind slave man. It don't matter what color you are. It don't even matter. It don't even matter. Person mm. that don't trust math, that's it. You you you're toast. Right. You're toast. They got me good, O'Shea. Right, right. Shout out to Brother David John. Or James James Brother James said Crash feels so good when the house paid off. I'm in Cali. Six figures, houses, car paid off. AP credit score with only six thousand dollars in outstanding debt. I probably should shut up. What what city are you in, brother David? Shout out to brother David Johnson, man. I know you was in uh uh Cali. Uh, I mean the dream. Uh, again, shout out to everybody in the building. What up, brother Dollar Will? Good to see you, brother. We were just talking about you not too long ago. Uh, let me do this right for those people that need. And again, you know, I I, I like doing shows, with brother Lionel, because uh. You know, uh, it, it it is some very interesting. I I'm different, okay. I do accept that. I I, oh, I, yeah. fully, I fully embrace it too, because I know I'm always right, O'Shea. My math will all just, that, and I want you to listen to that post closely, O'Shea. My math will I'm always, always be right. right, and I'm not even bragging. I'm not even bragging. Right. <laughs> right. So I appreciate you, man. So let me just do this, guys, and I do thank you. I, I have been working. I've been burning the midnight oil um as of late because i wanted to get these two shows in today but i would appreciate um you know like i said we have a lot of talented uh content creators in uh in in, in black youtube and a lot of times they're not necessarily in the entertainment realm right and uh you know i like to try to give quality because you guys know i'm in the uh the the, the manosphere space in which we deal with a lot of black male issues and I, I really feel that I should bring a lot better quality to my guys. I know, uh, you know, that doesn't always result in, you know, the the the, the biggest number of views. But I really want to be a content creator. That uh, you you in Sacramento Beauty Mystery? Uh oh, <laughs> you in Yuba City somewhere? But I just want to always um, bring the most content uh, quality content to brother that I can do. I think it's my I think it's my duty, right? And to bring on other content creators that are also talented. I think that's also my duty to share their content. So um, I, I really feel that we should be doing that. Right. And like savings money is debt. Like I said, it's what those, it's a, you talk about the red pill. This is a red pill channel. <laughs> Ain't no more <laughs> red pill than this. So thank you brother Evan Ames. 
So, you know, we want to continue to bring brothers in and, um, you know, brothers that actually uh, know what they're talking about. You 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 know what's going on. Uh, Hunter from Samtown. Chico! I used to be, look, sh shout out to, uh, beautiful. see, Mystery, I used to be at the Madison Bear Garden. Don't get me started over there. It was, it was cracking. I had to. I had to, yeah, the Madison Bear, I, I was doing too much uh, back in my, but yeah, we we, we all know about the 530. Don't y'all go down there because, uh, you know, but anyways, 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 anyway, you should email me. You should email me. But anyways, guys, thank you, Brother Evan Ames. I really appreciate you for uh, coming on, Brother Linnell. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, let me, let me see. Is there, is there anybody that has a, a question that you want to uh uh, ask. Hey, O'Shea, what if I told you becoming a debt free can save you from bad relationships too? Would you believe me? Oh, talk about that. Okay. Once you get, once you, once you do what it takes to become financially free, you won't take, you won't date any woman that's in debt. You won't take her serious ever. I don't care how fine she is. I don't care how good the sex is. You wouldn't want and you would know these, you would get these signs before you even got serious, before anything got serious. You would know right away that you're not going to take her serious. If she's hmm. you're like, if the first question you would ask, you're like, you got student loans? And she says, yes, you're going to be like, hey, uh, when are you thinking about paying those off? If she go, oh, you know, I'm just going to continue to make the minimum payments and this and that, you're going to be like, negative, sorry, we ain't going nowhere. You would stop right away. You wouldn't get involved with anybody that believes in debt, keeping student loan debt that long. And, or you would ask, hey, how'd you get that phone? Oh, I, I'm, it's on a payment plan. You would stop. You'd be like, nope, I'm not dating anybody that's financing a cell phone. I already know what the finances look like if you're financing a cell phone. You, you, you know what? You know what? We we <laughs> <laughs> we need to do a whole show just on that. That would be a real. Oh, yeah, we could. I was totally different dude after I got out of debt when I was dating. I was like, oh, wow, this is a whole new world. Mm. I didn't know that. Mm. OK, let's 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 do that one, because I know I know these Negroes is going to basically uh, 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 love that show. They're going to love mm -hmm. that. one. So, oh, yeah, that's, that's a good one. one. That's a real good one for this. This uh uh this 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 market. So, guys, this is uh and guys, thank you for all the support. Um subscribe and hit the bell and uh again shout out to brother ill wills right ill wills is a brother that uh he brings me a lot of people right brother ill wills and uh you know he really cares about brothers he you know he's not a youtuber but um oh say what if your employer pays your cell phone bill what what about that that's different right uh i wouldn't i wouldn't allow that you know because I, I did that i wouldn't allow my employer to pay my cell phone bill you know why because when they do that, that gives them 24 hour access to your life. That's what you're doing. That's what I did. Right. I thought I was like, oh, yeah, I'm saving money. But I didn't think now they have 24. I would ne I would always have a separate phone for my job and my personal phone. I'll keep that totally separate. I would never do that again. That's not free. People joke mm -hmm. about it being an electronic leash too, O'Shea. And it's true. Mm, OK, you're giving them what they're paying your bill for a reason. You're giving them permission that they can call you anytime they wish, even when you're not getting paid. When you're debt free, you don't. I would never allow that shit. You ain't calling me off hours. That means I'm working for free. No, I ain't no slave. I'm not a slave. Hey, L, I, email, I emailed you at at six o'clock. Was it after five? Yeah. Then why are you emailing me? <laughs> I don't care if it was the boss. I don't care who it is. You you're not paying me when I'm off the clock. That's my time. Right. So I would never allow that. I, I mean, if I got a separate phone, I'll let them pay that one. But once once I at five o'clock came, I would just power the phone off and put it in a desk. There's no reason for me to take it. You know what I'm saying? There's no re Why would I take it? You're not paying me. So why would I answer? It doesn't make any sense. But if I was in debt, like I was, I tied it to my phone. They paid my phone bill. And guess what they did, O'Shea? They called me any time they wanted. I was their slave. They owe me 24 hours a day. I was scared to leave my phone in another room. It, it, being nervous that I was going to miss a call. That's a slave. I ain't no slave. I was mm -hmm. a slave when I was in debt, though. Right. I know, I know that's right. 
So, like I said, it's been a hell of a hell of a show, man. I I know I have been, uh, you know, me messing around, man, uh, with, with 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 really doing. But you know what? I said, man, let me go ahead and knock it out. And this has just been an excellent show. People, people have really been. I know I'm different, okay? I know I'm different. But yeah, oh no, 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 no. We know that, but it's a good difference though, because these Negroes need to hear this. You know, I like to make people think. I do. I like to like. Damn, how come I do believe that? How come? How come I believe it's okay to keep student loans that long? Why do I think like that? I went to college for four years, but I kept my student loan for twenty. Why do I think I make people think? That's it. Right. Right. And especially with black people. I mean, I know that your 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 channel it reaches all people and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. you know, our brothers, you know. I do. Uh, I want to go. I want to go. That's one of my goals, O'Shea. I want to go into the inner cities and teach what I teach and understand, help young black people understand that it's just basic math. All that fancy stuff you see on TV, the stock market and all that other stuff, that means absolutely nothing. Investing, you know, you you as a young person, you see that kind of stuff, you'd be like, oh my God, that dude must be a brainiac. He's on stock market. Ooh, he looks like he knows how to invest and all this other stuff. You don't know that. All you got to do is ask him, see how much debt he's in. If he's in debt, none of that stuff he's doing means anything. Yeah, no, that, that's real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if I can teach young kids that and say, hey man, it's just math. That's all? Yeah, that's it. You can be rich. That's it. Just stay out of debt. You'll be rich. Yeah, that's real. That's definitely real. That is question. definitely real. Terry and, got a uh, question. What'd you say? Terry got a question. I see that. That's okay. Chat. What's the question? What is the question? Got? Oh, Terry. Thank you, brother Terry. He says, is it a good idea to pull a hundred K from your phone way to cash out a house and pay yourself back every month for 10 years or put down 10 K from your private savings on a hundred thousand dollar home for 15 years. Thank you, brother is Terry. I didn't say that. To pull a hundred from your 401k to cash out a house and pay yourself back every month for 10 years or put down, put down 10 K for your private savings on a hundred thousand I think that would be the first idea would be the best idea, right? Because he's saying pull a hundred. How much does the house cost, right? That probably was the, the yeah. Price. First, I mean, if he for, uh, see the, the first thing I need to understand is if Terry's in debt, because anything here wouldn't even make any difference. But we're going to just assume that he's not in debt. Let's just say he's not in debt. Well, right mm -hmm. now, you could pull out that money with a penalty free and pay off your house, right? So whatever percentage rate you're paying now on the house by paying the house off you won't be paying that percentage rate no more. So that's money in your pocket right off the bat. Boom. Right. This other way he's saying, pay yourself back every month for 10 years or put down 10 K. I'm not really understanding what he's saying there. I'm not sure from a private savings on a hundred thousand because to, to get a deal on a, a good deal on a house, you have to put a minimum of 20% down on the house. That's minimum right off the bat. Minimum. Mm -hmm. Minimum. If you put in 10k, you're gonna get an FHA mortgage, and FHA mortgages are only are only for people that will not accept that they cannot afford a home. That's who they're for. So anybody with an FHA mortgage, the bank is doing you because they know you don't understand money. That's why you accept the FHA mortgage. That's one of the worst mortgages on the market, and people have it, and people talk about it like it's nothing. So if you came in the bank with ten thousand dollars down for a hundred thousand dollar home, you're gonna get a subprime mortgage. Mm -hmm. So right now, at this particular moment, cashing out, like right now at this particular moment, it would be wise for a person to cash out their 401k and pay off their student loans because there is no 10% penalty. That would be that would be wise. Or pay off a house. That would be wise. Yes. And the reason and the reason why I back that up, this is how I back that up by paying off why you why paying off a house would be wise. There's trillions of dollars in mortgage loan debt, trillions with a T. That's millions of people that believe they're homeowners when they're not. Mm -hmm. Pay yours off and you will be. And by paying yours off, you will be immediately financially ahead of all those millions of people that simply believe they're homeowners. Mm. And you will be Really, there you pay your house off, you will be a homeowner. Those people are what you call loan owners. 
<laughs> Those are loan owners. They're not homeowners. Uh, uh, Whether they want to believe that or not, I could easily prove that with mathematics, but they won't believe it. Even, even if I told them, O'Shea, hey, go up to somebody with a mortgage, O'Shea, and go, hey, you know, you're not really a homeowner because you got a mortgage. They will argue you all the way down to the ground when they know it's true. Doesn't make any sense. That's how the, that's how the bank got them. Bank makes them believe it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Our brother said, loan owner. Ooh, loan owner. I know they'd be mad at your ass, nigga. Like, I can't stand him. And then, you know what? If they said that, O'Shea, I would say, why are you mad? If you can tell me why you're mad at me, I'll accept it. Tell me why you're mad. <laughs> they won't, they they won't have an answer. They can't have an answer. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, I'm mad at your math. I didn't invent it. I, it was here before I was born. So it's not my fault. Ooh wee. <laughs> man, uh, okay. you know I, I want you to hey, you, you, you know got a person that ruined ru Thanksgiving dinner, man. I want you to become a multimillionaire, O'Shea. You just learn this basic, O'Shea. You'll be a multimillionaire. If you man, accept man. that you, you if you accept that you're a slave with student loan debt and yeah, pay that yeah. shit off, you will be a multimillionaire, O'Shea. Live anywhere you want in the world. Anywhere in the world, O'Shea. Just get out of debt. <laughs> Loan owner. I like that one. Brother Great mm -hmm. Britain. Let me do this real quick, brothers. Uh, thank you for all the support. Guys, can y'all do me a favor and, and subscribe? Now, if you guys want me to bring this kind of content more, let me know. Uh, like I said, we had a really good stream on the, with the truckers earlier, and now we're touching this. Uh, I, I, I'm really w trying to bring more of this sort of. Y'all know I'm, I love the nigga content. Y'all know I'm getting back into that. Y'all know. Y'all just wait another month. I'm getting back into my nigga content though, because y'all know don't nobody do messy shit like me. But, <laughs> um, but I do want to. I want to add more value to the guys that watch the channel. So if you guys want me and brother Lionel, if he can do it tomorrow, I will do it tomorrow. Why you should never date women with debt. If you guys do that, I'm ready we for that. Will, we will we will come out with a classic. It'll save the entire Sacramento, and uh, it'll be <laughs> mental spirit finance. Okay, so um, so guys, but I do need you uh, to subscribe. Shout out to brother Askwith uh, and all the other brothers out here, brother Ill Wills. Yeah, I mean I I love that low level shit, nigga. Don't 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 sleep, brother Landon Brown. But I, I, you know, I do uh, uh, love, I love all kind of content, nigga content, good content, uh, you know, and all of that. But um, shout out to Kel Kel. Let me go ahead and uh, guys who need this, get to subscribe to, um, the, you know, and be, see, the thing about this, savings and debt, this is a, uh, this is a whole other community, right? And this is a community that right. you can uh, be involved in that talks about mm -hmm. just one topic, right? And it's good yeah, to be around. It, and, and I talk about what's going on in the world and how you can relate to it, being debt free and stuff like that, like current events too. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So it's good to get be in different communities as you consume social media, right? Like I, I'm in different communities too, and uh, it's it's good to be in different communities. You can meet new friends, meet new different people that are going through the same things as you. Try to do that, and uh, you can achieve a lot more, right? So make sure that you guys subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, on this content. I definitely appreciate all of you. Uh, keep doing that. Keep doing that. Any any uh, last words, Brother Linnell? No, I, I appreciate I appreciate you putting me on and I, I can't look, I, I look forward to talking about the topic, the dating topic as a debt-free man. Oh, uh, you guys are going to love that one. You guys are going to love it. Okay. So, uh, you, like, you can reach me at, just do a YouTube search savings minus debt. You can find me on a uh, uh, Instagram savings minus debt, or you can go to my website. If you want my services, free 30 minute consultation at savings minus debt.com. Okay. Thank you. Great Britain. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks again. Thanks again. It was thank you again. See you, to, see you tomorrow in there. I promise you I'll be here. All right, okay. guys. Thank you for all the support. I really, really appreciate you. Uh, uh hundred K for the home, not debt. That's what he said. 100k 100k for the home not debt oh he must mean no debt 
Oh, okay, okay, okay. I think know that. Yeah, I would, I would pay off my home because that would, like I said, it would mean paying off a house would make it would make you an instant homeowner. Like, and there's millions of people that just believe their home when believe their homeowners when they're loan owners. So just all you got to do is just look at the look at the numbers differently. I don't look at I don't look at TV anymore. I just watch people. What the majority of people in debt do, I just watch them. And so if they believe they're homeowners and they don't know they're not homeowners, I really become one. I just do the opposite of the majority, right? If the majority believe they can't buy a car without financing, I buy my car's cash for half the price from people in debt that can't be, that that finance cars. All right, all right, okay, okay, and shout out. Uh, yeah, shout out! I'll shout out to beautiful mystery. My 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 big bro is still stuck in Chico right now. I think so. Uh, yeah, man, I used to take that I five down to Redden, man. That woo wee! I got some I got some stories about Chico. That's another time, man. But anyways, guys, shout out in the in the Thunderbird Inn or Thunderbird Lodge. I don't know if that state still had that Thunderbird Hotel still there, man. But I got a lot of stories about Chico. That's before I met the Lord, though. But anyways, guys, thanks so much. Uh. <laughs> Um, and appreciate you, brother Linnell. I'm getting ready to log off here. Peace okay. out. Thanks again. We'll see you tomorrow on that good show, brother. All right, man. Peace.